Hello everyone and welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. So today we're going to raid all the expansions in a tier list. So basically we're going, I'm going to give like my opinion about which expansion I best like, why and so on. So let's start with the order of when they actually released in like from old games to new games. So we're going to start with, you know, vanilla and basically going up the way. So we're going to start with vanilla. So basically, Vanilla for me was a really great game. I was raiding, um, I was 12 years old. So I could, you know, just play all day long without any consequences. I didn't have to think about payments or anything like that. It was a great game, but could, of course, be better. But still, I think it was a great game for compared to what it was. So I, I'm going to give it a strong A because I think Vanilla was a really great game of a first game coming out. Um, even see the success of classic it is just a strong game it's a good game but i'm not going to give it s because it's not perfect then we have burning crusade which is the next expansion i will probably be placing the burning crusade on a2 because it was also a very strong expansion which was close to manila you know both both games you still had to go on websites to read up things you could you could raid in both the only difference was like the arena systems and some other small things with factions sorry with reputation it's like both of these was a really good a tier expansions but then we come in to the red of lich king and i feel like relay side they did such a big step up here and that deserves a well big congratulations like a big s tier like ravelage king was definitely an s tier expansion like vanilla is a good a tier burning crusade i will actually go this far and say vanilla was a good b tier of a game then they stepped up and took burning crusade as an a tier and then they learned even more from the community because they listened they listened to what we said and made the perfect game. I'm actually going to rate it like this because I think this is the fair order that we, we didn't know what was better back in then until we got Burning Crusade and found out, well, there is actually better things to do. And then we got Red Lich King, which we found out like was perfect. Like Vanilla was a great expansion for the classic game of the game. Burning Crusade was adding even more ex exciting raids and dungeons and arena systems and this outline world which was nice and you know the first new races in the game which is basically blood of Andrenal. but then we get red lich king which introduces uh, for example the dungeon finder which i like i know a lot of people don't like it but i like it actually so that was nice I, I enjoyed having the dungeon finder the dungeons were more appealing the raids was excellent i loved the winter grass uh, winter grass arenas you know just the whole game was just fantastic it was just like a fantastic game and i had so much fun then they came out with cataclysm and first today i was like thinking cataclysm should be you know like something down here but then i just reminded myself cataclysm actually had a lot of cool things like it had tolba rat which was a really great pvp island which just was cool and I was like, okay, that, that deserves to go a bit up. It had Firelands, which was like a great Ragnaros, uh, Ragnarok or Ragnaros raid. Um, it just added things which actually were pretty cool. But at the same time, it was also an expansion which went down. So they had some cool things about Cataclysm. But I would probably rate Cataclysm as a C1. C1. They also added Raid Finder, which was fine. Um, but it just felt like Cataclysm was at that point where the game was turning around in the wrong direction, if we could say in that. But yeah, so let's let that one be. So Cataclysm is getting a, a C. Um, which was still, I mean, it's still a great thing to be on C, but it wasn't really the good stuff up here. But then, got Mr. Pandaria. Which changed everything for me. Because Mr. Pandaria, in my world, 
was probably B A no no it was ST expansion I had so much more I had so much fun in Mr. Pandaria I was raiding with friends I was doing so much arena with all the awesome PvP gear you could buy I was enjoying playing the monk I was enjoying playing the pandas I was just enjoying you know the whole time time islands island they did with daily quests and mobs you could kill they, they had so many fantastic things in in Mr. Pandaria which just was fantastic I had so much fun at this expansion it's it, it's really it, it was a really good one it's I have to admit that Mr. Pandaria was one of my favorite times to play the game and then we get the Warlords of Draenor which I know is the expansion that most people probably hate but the thing is I was actually having fun I was actually enjoying it you know I like this um, Asran or whatever they called it where you like basically pushed up a team endless PvP map the raids were fine and it was simple the game was basically simple because again it was a game where you you just do PvP you buy P gear from the PvP vendors um, you would raid to get better gear you know it was a simple game which like the other expansions it was a nice simple game and I had so much fun in Warlords of Draenor so I'm even gonna put it on B since it it didn't really add any like fantastic things as Mr. Pandaria and Red Lich King did it was more like it was a good fun but not on the scale as Burning Crusade so I'm gonna let it on B since it was a great game which added Garrison you know like that base you had where you could send people out on missions I wasn't really happy for that so that's not a plus for me but Still cool expansion, you know, Horde Alliance standing together, defeat the new Hell Screams from Outland, which was cool. But again, all that that in that expansion basically led up to we had to meet the Legion again, which was an expansion called Legion. And I'm sorry to say, but I'm actually gonna drop Legion on if. Yeah, that was the expansion World of Warcraft ever made. That was the most un allow the, the expansion that most hated else. Basically, every time you play, let's say a rogue, and you had to switch spec from Sobble to, to Assassin or to Outlaw or whatever they called it that time, Combat Rogue or whatever, you had to level up your weapons again with all this dust you could find i cannot even remember what it's called i just remember that every time you change spec it was a pain because you had to level up your weapons and you couldn't get new weapons in the game because everyone had these magic magic weapons and i was just like oh no and then they added these uh space lands where you had to like go to the where we had to like basically travel to the burning crusades own land and attack them which was just like one little zone, which was a really annoying zone to be in. Um, it, it just felt like Legion was such a... I don't know, it was um, it was pretty cool we got the Demon Hunters. I have to admit, that was a pretty cool class. I'm not playing it myself, but it was a cl cool class. But still, it was like... It was weird. It, it, it was really weird. I don't know if I enjoyed that one. I, I mean, it's pretty cool. They also added like aligned, uh, aligned races, but that's not really like putting it up. So, uh, so I'm gonna say Legion is an F tier for me. It was a game I played it, but I considered multiple times for Legion to quit, but I didn't because I liked the game and I wanted to stay. So Legion, I'm sorry, you fall down in F. But then we had Battle for Azeroth, which was actually, I actually like, I'm, I'm not sure why I'm going to place it. It's like, it was a great expansion with these new allied races as Sandalarian called Tyrants. And the game introduced this war mode where it's basically removing world PvP or you could do it or you could not do it, but removing servers from PvP servers. 
it allowed for more races with more abilities. Um, it was a cool expansion. Like, it was actually pretty cool. The raids were fun. The, the PvP was great. Um, but you had this Azerite Nick, which was like a pain, where again, you had to get all these Azerite into it and make it stronger. And all those bonus systems they add to this game, I don't like them. I just basically want to grind gear, get stronger with gear, and play the game. I don't want all these other systems. So... And that's basically also why I hate Legion, because you had that weapon you had to upgrade. And now World of Dra sorry, Battle Fire is doing the same. So... The problem was I played only the first season in Battle for Azeroth and then I quit it because it was just um it was a great game the first season but then they released a new patch and then all our gear was basically trash and we had to re farm everything and get even more as a ride and all those things and we were like why are we even playing anymore um so I'm actually it wasn't as bad as Legion but it should be in D. No, 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 that's not fair. Ba Battle for Azeroth deserves a place next to Cataclysm for saying you tried, you had a solid game, um, you didn't succeed in my book, but you, you did it. You had a solid game which was enjoyable in some kind of way. Um, where I'm probably going to put Legion. I'm actually regretting that I put Legion on F and I'm going to put it up to D. To say Legion, I know you added allied races. You added some fun stuff to the game. Even though you had the weapons, which was horrible. But still and you had the mage tower it had a good law so it wasn't prefer perfect but you know it, it deserves to be on d but then we have shadowlands which is the expansion we are playing right now and without doubt i'm just not even gonna think about it it's if shadowlands is probably the worst expansion so far And I'm calling it. I know a lot of people is going to get angry at me in this video now, but I'm calling it. Shadowlands in my book is by far the worst expansion. So big time. And let me know, let me let me tell you why. So first of all, the level experience from 50 to 60 was fine. Like it's fine. Okay. All good. But when you get to end game it's like, I don't know what Blizzard thought, like, let's add 100 systems you need to level up, get points in, to play endgame. Everyone's gonna love it. She's gonna love it. No, I hate it. So first of all, when you get to endgame, you need to basically pick a covenant. With the covenant, you need to level it up. So you get even like more stamina and stuff like that with your covenant which is bullshit for me that covenant could give you more stamina once you get up to max level in covenants you need this uh anima i think it's called was it anima yeah i think it was anima no it wasn't azurite because azurite was the one from the battle for azurite it's anima so basically you're getting all this anima you have to deliver and then you unlock like new talent trees at your covenant. And each of the covenant has like about, is it like three to five talent power talent trees? Or is it only three? Three. I think it was three. Let's say it's three talent trees. And then you have to pick between these which one you best like, which has the best abilities for you. Which is like passive effects, which can still be like pretty life changing for you. Like some stuff can help you when you die you, you then you don't die and become something else and stuff like that but just just the fact that you need to pick a covenant 
out of four covenants, which also gives you different spells. So you have to pick the right covenant to get the two right spells. Then you have to level up the covenant, and then you have to get this talent system thing, and even you know level up that thing, and get items for it so you get the right spells and stats in it. Next to it, you need to get your legendary item. And now you can get two legendary items and all the different legendary items you can have in all your slots. You can only have two on is giving you different spells. So you have to find out which of the items is giving you a best spell you like. And before you can get the legendary items, you need to craft the pieces and basically the, the strongest pieces. If you don't like crafting in the game, you're forced to buy it from other people. And they right now sell the strongest one on auction house between 200,000 gold up to 600,000 gold. So that means if you are a casual player who don't have much gold, who just want the best legendary in the game, you basically have to farm Torghast so much to get all this ash stuff, ashen currency. And then you have to go to auction house and spend plus 200,000 gold to get this item. It's a smart move by Blizzard to basically do this because they force you kind of like to buy gold in their own in-game market, which is smart for them because they get money then. But people like me who don't like craft get pissed because we have to get an item from a freaking crafter, someone who crafts. We need to get an item from him to get a strong item. It's like, who thought that was a good idea that we needed to that we needed a crafting item to get stronger in the game. I can understand that crafters are able to craft gear that is strong as raid gear, but basically we 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 need a crafter in this case. It's like so dumb. So okay, so you have the covenant system which you need to level up. You have your legendary which you need to level up. You have your talent trees which you need to follow up on, and you have your normal gear you need to level up. So basically, you have four systems you need to think about. Covenants, legendaries, your own talents, PP talents, and gearing up. So you have to think about four things. Where in Vanilla, Burning Crusade, Revelage King, you are thinking about your items. How simple and nice was that? It was such a nice time. But now they throwing hundred systems at you, telling you to get points and stuff in those systems. And can you just imagine how it is when you change character to one of your other characters? You have to go through all that again. You need to get a new legendary. You need to pick a covenant and level up with them. You, you need to gear up again. Like I have no problem gearing up with an alt, but having to go through all the systems again, is like yeah so i'm not trash talking the game i'm playing world of warcraft right now i'm playing as we speak right now i enjoy the game because i'm just gonna play casually i don't care about in game i don't care about min maxing i'm just gonna enjoy the game and play casually and play dungeons with my friends that's it so i'm happy but still, if I had to rate the expansions, I would rate it like this. A well-deserved S tier for both Red Lich King and Mr. Pandaria. A well-deserved A tier for Burning Crusade. Wall of the Draenor and Vanilla gets on a well-deserved B. Cataclysma and Battle Fasorot is on a C. Legion on D. And Shadowlands, I'm sorry, you tried. But you get the F. And that's just how it is. So, thanks for watching, everyone. It was a pleasure making this tier list. Let me know what you think. Do you Is your tier list going to look like this? Would you swap around something? Let me know in the comments. What would your tier list look like? I'm curious to know. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening or morning. Or, yeah, whatever time it is at your place. And remember to subscribe if you want to see more World of Warcraft content. And keep in mind, on the 19th of April, we're going to see the next expansion for World of Warcraft. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.
Bye.